I'm going to be showing you the steps I went through to create my custom bumper for my K5 Blazer. This is actually a M1009 or a Cuck V a military blazer. It's a special three quarter ton that the military had built especially for them. The front bumper and the brush guard for this was, was pretty decent, but it, it, it's a little standard looking. And uh, even though the brush guard is made out of flat stock, it would have been pretty strong, but I wanted a little something a little bigger, a little stronger. This is the process that I went through to develop it. Showing you the different angles here from of the stock bumper and brush guard. Here I start my CAD or cardboard aided design trying to get the look of it after I remove the stock bumper. And started out here, it's it's a little bit too big. It's it's coming out too far. And I had to cut that back considerably. Uh, it would have been huge. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I mean, we're, we're looking at 12 inches there sticking out from the front grill. I attached my uh, verticals to the frame, and th this is the main support for the entire bumper. There, there will be some other cross bracing and stuff that I add to it later. But this, this is flat stock. This is just cut out from a 4x8 sheet of quarter inch steel and bol bolted to the frame. Trying to make sure that's level, get everything lined up and level here. You can see the bolts going through the frame here are using the standard bolt holes. Then I added the wings to it. You can see my markings on, on the front of the bumper there. Uh, where I'm also putting a two inch receiver. This is where I can put a ball hitch or I can put a, another attachment point there, uh, just a ge general purpose. And you can see the box in the bottom in between the two frame rails. This is where a winch is made to be mounted. And uh, we'll get into that more in just a minute. Here I've got all the new hardware in bolting it to the frame. You can see the drawing there where uh, I laid it out for the mounting holes for the winch. And what I did is I, I went down to some of the big box stores, also looked online and got the dimensions for the uh, bolt holes for the winch. They're, they're pretty standardized and I laid those out here and went ahead and drilled, drilled the holes. Here I've got the uh, top plates on. The, these are all just tack welded in place. This is not the final weld, but you can see also where I cut out for the winch to be recessed into the bumper there. And later I'll create a plate to go over this and some uh, temporary tabs to bolt the plate to. But the bumper is starting to shape up here. You can see it from different angles and I lined it up down the sides and measured to measured, uh, make sure it was equal on both sides and tried to get the angles the same. Me measure, 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 and measure again. And here I've cut out the opening for the winch cable or winch rope where you can put the fair lead there. Got the holes drilled to mount the fair lead. It, it's coming together. Just uh, showing the uh, the sides here and what they look like. I uh, had to cut some relief to allow for a little variances in the fen fender layout and so forth. But normally I would uh, cut one side and then do a mirror image for the other side on the bumpers there. There was a little variance in the spacing on the, the fenders and so forth. So I had to go back and do a little modifications. I'm Got some more of the welding done, and now I'm uh, putting on the first upright for the brush guard. I would look on online at different bumpers and brush guards to see what I liked, and then I would just pick the features that I liked to make my own. I cut out the first one here, and then I would use I used it to cut out the second one, so I'd have the same profile. 
I put the second upright on. I got the crossbars put in, got them welded in. That's just some pipe that I cut to length. Not DOM or anything, it's just pipe that I had. I figure for this application, since it's, it's not safety rated or anything like that, I wouldn't have to use a DOM, it's just, it's just some pipe. It should be plenty strong enough for the application here. And here you, you can see the single uprights, and they're okay. It just didn't look beefy enough to me. I went to modify. So after I got all this welded in, it looked okay. Not bad, functional, surely, but I wanted something different. Here's my uh, porta band. I had this uh, porta band saw for quite a while. This is what I cut the pipe with. As you can see, I got it clamped in here with a chain clamp, and that worked well to hold it in place. All right, I uh, didn't show it here, but you can see now that the uprights are now a whole lot thicker. And what I did is I cut out two identical uprights, welded them in place, and I used some one inch flat bar stock, I believe it's 3 16 and wrapped it and welded that in place. And that uh, to me makes it look a whole lot stronger and beefier. It's just more appealing to my, to my eye anyway. All right, to the corner brush guards there that I, I bent up, I used just a regular Harbor Freight pipe bender. Had a little trouble getting it to bend without flattening or, or kinking in the corners. But what I ended up doing, which is what a lot of people do, is fill the pipes with sand. Packed it in there as good as I could. Just pack it, pack it, pack it. Cover up the ends of the pipe with tape. You can use uh, duct tape and just put multiple layers going, crisscrossing it on the ends. Get the sand in there, get it packed as tight as you can, and then tape the other end as well. Once you've got both ends taped, you can use the pipe bender and you can work it around that radius. If you try to bend it all in one area, it will most likely kink. But if you, you mark the center of your radius first and then work out an inch either side and then two inches either side and you can get that bend without putting a kink in the pipe. It takes a little manipulation. And of course the pipe was not precisely cut to length before I started bending. You can leave it a little bit long and then once you get it bent, then you can cut it to fit exactly between the top of the bumper and the side of the upright there. And that, that's how I did that. Starting to look a lot better to me. This is design on the fly. I did not have a <laughs> completed drawing before I started. I had ideas. I had some sketches. The way I came up with those sketches was by going online, looking at different heavy duty bumpers, picked out the features that I liked. I incorporated those features into my bumper. Right now I don't have any openings on the front of the bumper for any of my marker lights or running lights. This military blazer has the blackout lights and I didn't want to lose that feature so I will cut out those openings here in, in a few minutes. Also you can see now I've got the cover for the fair lead opening that is also just bolted in so if and when I ever put a winch in the bumper it's ready to go. Just remove those two bolts. You got the opening to connect the fair lead. Okay, got the bumper back off doing some of the welding. You can also see I decided to put more upright bracing between the top of the brush guard and the top of the bumper. Again, the, these are just some pipes cut to length and uh, welded those in as well. You can see they're not spaced halfway between the upright for the center brush guard and the upright for the edge of the brush guard and that's because of the headlights. You, didn't, you don't want to get your pipes in front of the headlights so I had to offset them a little bit. You can see the diagonal braces here uh, that I've got coming out from the frame out to the corners of the bumper and that's some rectangular tubing and that the ends will be welded to the back of the, of the bumper once I get uh, the bumper completed. But uh, I decided I needed some lateral bracing 
to help in case of an impact on one of those corners and that uh, should uh, help strengthen the bumper to keep it from collapsing in on the fender. Okay, here you can see underneath in the, in the central box, as I call it, this, that's the bottom of the winch box opening. And you can see the welding all around. It's fully welded, every seam, every joint. And you can also see that the two inch receiver is welded to the front panel of the bumper to the underside of the winch box and so that that's not going anywhere and here here's the uh, other side of that same box again this is quarter inch plate you can see here in the corner these are the connection points for those diagonal braces coming off of the frame the diagonal braces bolt in to these connection points that way the bumper can be removed if necessary. You can see on those mounting points that I doubled up the steel behind the mounting points. There's a rectangular piece that's welded to the bumper itself and that, you know, if there was an impact or whatever, you're, you're less likely to have a tear or a, a penetration with that double reinforced steel. Just showing all the different welding here. This is quite a lot of welding to be done. Here is how I position the bumper. I would uh, use floor jack, jack stands, and whatever else I needed to brace it. But got it upside down here to finish burning in all the welding and also to be cutting out the holes for the various lights. Now you can see the holes that have been cut for the lights. The smaller holes out on the wings are for the blackout lights, the military blackout lights, and then the holes, the four inch square holes closer to the center, those are for some driving lights or fog lights. Here, close up of the openings that were cut for those lights. Okay, now we've got it painted. This is a uh, camo flat green paint. This is what I originally started to go with, was just to paint it green, just like Blazer is itself. Decided to do something different here a little later. And here it is. This is a bed liner. Just a standard bed liner. This is brushed on. Uh, you know, it's, it's not made to be smooth. It's made to be rough looking like it is. And I decided to go this way instead of paint. Here you can see the finish a little better, starting to dry out, but I kind of like the look. Okay, got the bumper back on the on the truck again. Got the lights mounted. Got the light, I found an LED light bar to go in between the uprights and it is bright. It, I really like the way it turned out. And here it is completed. It's a hoss of a bumper, maybe overkill, if there is such a thing on one of these K5 Blazers, but this is the final product. Hope you enjoyed looking at it. Sorry I didn't have video. This is what it looked like before we started. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos on my channel.